House of uh, Sankofa. We're back uh, once again. Um, uh, um, we are with uh, a gentleman who's done uh, some extensive work in the realm of uh, spirituality. Dr. Mucholoko Zulu Matabo Zulu. Uh, who's not only a spiritualist, but um, he's also a software engineer, metaphysical inventor. I mean, the list uh, goes on where I just run out of uh, words. Uh, without further ado, I think um, let's uh, introduce him uh, to the community of House of uh, Sankov. Togo Zamakos. Ah, Togo Zamakos. It almost becomes intimidating because you don't know where to start. To say, is he a software engineer? Is he a metaphysical scientist, mm. you're a doctoral, uh, doctoral uh, uh, practitioner as yes, well. Yes. Um, there's so much in your life and uh, you have truly lived. One <clears throat> sort of uh, is lost, you know, in as far as a starting point on where to start on this humble life of yours, but um, a very rich life, I think, uh, that you've lived. And of course, uh, you're still digging um, for, for more in as far as realizing yourself, your spirituality, the spirituality of uh, African uh, people. Uh, we are therefore humbled uh, to be in your presence today on House of Sankofa and uh, just uh, get room to be able, uh, you know, to uh, uh, sit back and uh, listen, you know, to this uh, voice uh, that's uh, drank from ancient wells, I would like to say. So, Sia Togo Ah, Smooth is. Yeah. Um, we are we are in the presence of greatness. Yes. Yeah, but for me now, it's it's such a great honor to be in his presence. But just the spirit of humility and him inviting us to his um, place of work and yes. his office means a lot. And I, I would really appreciate the audience to get a bit of an understanding as to who we're sitting with. He's authored more than eight books. He's written hundreds of articles, including the Sisutu Dictionary of Mathematics, The Sacred Knowledge of the Desert, which is this book that is sitting in front of me here, African Philosophical Transcendence, African Origin of Mathematics, A Woman in the Bush, A Triangle Tool of Analysis. And let me mention that he has worked for the likes of Abu Google through their company, Adscape Media in Canada. Um, he has been with the Praxis Institute and the computer scientist, Dr. Nex Mendler. Back in the day, he immigrated to Canada in 1989. He did his university institutional studies on Algonquin College of Applied Arts and Technology. He graduated with a diploma honors in general arts and science and Carleton University where he completed advanced software engineering courses. He also graduated in database development and computer engineering as well. He's been doing a lot of work in engineer therapeutics at the School of Computer Science under the mentorship of Dr. Jensen Sedwick of Carleton University. His other innovations include cryptography, what I guess would think would be the earlier um, technology that has now become crypto or blockchain technology. Yes. He'll explain a little bit further <laughs> as, as we engage with the conversation digital forensics and mood diagnostics. He analyzed hundreds of computational neuroscience experiments over a period of 10 years in order to increase the algorithmic efficacy of Teguini using advanced mathematics like differential equations and spectral analysis. And lastly, he holds a number of intellectual property certificates awarded to him by the Canadian Intellectual Property Office. His resume is very um, intimidating. It's not all of it. Sir Togoza to be in the presence of greatness. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir Togoza Makosi. Just as uh, he was reading it out, uh, Makosi, I, I sort of, uh, you know, had a bright, a light bulb moment, as they would call it, on where to start. And really, here's the starting point. You were just a head boy, were yeah. you not? Makosi, I was a head boy. And uh, thank you very much for the gracious introduction. Yes, I was a head boy. That's where it all starts. Yes. And which is the reason why this book, uh, The Sacred Knowledge of the Desert, African Philosophical Transcendence, I make it a point that I mentioned that, hmm. that it appears it's not lost. 
Uh, there's this a lot book. of Makos, and that's the mm. greatest book you'll ever read. Uh, that particular book uh, basically uh, is called The Sacred Knowledge of the Desert, and here is a story. So, I used to be a religious fanatic of the Seventh day Adventist Church. Yes. You know, uh, uh, along with uh, the great Bishop Maponga, you know. Oh, Mabang Mari Yeah, actually, it's interesting because yes. actually, the Seventh day Adventist Church and the Washtowers, mm. they come from the same origin. I see. Yeah, William Miller is the one in the round 1844 45. Mm. These are American churches from America, yes. So anyways, so I left for exile in 1987. Yes. And then, so when I left for exile in 1987, then I went to Botswana. Now, when I left South Africa, I said, I'm running away from a white God. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a church where they foreground this white God you know, mm. by the name of Jesus, of course. So, and then I said, okay, I'm running away from a white God, along with the apartheid. And uh, I'm leaving behind even the, uh, the biblical teachings. So I landed in Botswana. And then, and actually it's interesting, it was, when I left here, it was uh, August 16th, which is my um, uh, uh, eve of birthday, because yes. my birthday is the 17th of August. <laughs> <laughs> what year was this? Uh, 1987, 1987, 1987, exactly, yes. So I landed in, in Botswana uh, on the 17th of August. And then, uh, of course, they ask you, you know, what organization do you want to, uh, do you want to be with? I said ANC. So I went to uh, northern Botswana, you know, and uh, which is near the desert there, north of uh, Francistown. Mm. So when I arrived at the ANC camp, they introduced me to another white god. And this white god is Karl Marx. Karl Marx. And his Bible is Das Kapital. Mm. Then I said, there is no escape from a white god. <laughs> right? Because I... <laughs> you are escaping one and you meet yes. up with another one. Then I meet one. another one. Yes, Karl Marx. So then the voice said to me, there is a way. Let's go to the desert, the Kalahari Desert. Mm. So that's why I went to Kalahari Desert. Now, a desert is a very, um, you know, is it, is an incredible place in the sense that it can kill you. You can die in the desert. Yes. Very and dry. Very dry. Yes. And you know what could kill you? Believe it or not, is food. So if you eat a lot of food, you fill your stomach, that's enough to kill you. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the blood... You know, there's a digestion, so the, all the blood goes to the stomach for digestion. Mm. So there's not enough blood for the brain and stuff like that. So you could actually die from that. So when you eat, you must not eat too much in the desert. So you must practice what I call gentle starvation. Yeah, very, very gentle important. Gentle starvation. Yes, very important. Mm. I'm afraid of the word starvation because it means uh, I'm going to starve. But it's a gentle one. But it's a gentle one. This one. Oh, this <laughs> a gentle one. Oh. I've said Guru's teachings <laughs> yes. align to what he's saying. Yes. Uguti, he actually even advises Uguti, going to bed hungry is actually good for your health. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Yeah, indeed, yeah. So then I, I see this, uh, this plant. This fragile plant, a very small plant. I look at this plant and says, this plant is brave to show some green in this harsh, inhospitable place. You see? Hmm. Then there's uh, not a drop of water inside. There, no, there's no water that point. It's very dry. Mm. Uh, but this plant, it was like saying, you know, I hatch my bed on the heavens, because that's where the rain will come. So awesome, of course. And then as time progresses. Uh, the rain does not come. Now, you see what happens is that in the desert, uh, the sunshine, there's a, lot, there's a lot of sunshine. The sunshine is galore, you know, it's extreme sunshine. But this is a, the killer sun rays, eh, you know. Mm -hmm. So this, this sunshine triggers photosynthesis in this plant. But photosynthesis without water kills the plant. It needs water. So, ah, Plamans, yeah, Makos. Nine Nine be good. So what eventually happens to the plant is that uh, it begins to lose foliage. 
you see, it begins to lose foliage. And then from there, the plant, you know, it looks dead, but actually it's not dead. Mm -hmm. All it has just done, it has gone underground. And the book says, the great desert flower Mponi of the great Khalhad, Galhari Desert, yes. remains underground, listening to the slightest indications of the falling rain. When the rain falls, it springs to life, knowing that the rain will soon be gone. That is the philosophy of the desert plant. So, now, it's quite amazing that uh, uh, this became the inspiration for that particular book. In fact, it was actually, th that's not the first book. The first book is the one called A Woman in the Bush. Yes. So, I wrote a piece called Venturesome Kisses. Because I noticed that in the in the list uh, Duke camp, uh, you know, people because of you know apartheid government used to send uh, you know assassins, uh, gunmen, hired guns, Hitler, hitmen, yeah. yeah, to abduct or to just kill you. Sometimes they put what is it, poison gas. So, so you are in the house and they will put this gas, and then once you sn sniff it. You, you you become drowsy, mm -hmm. you sleep and then you are gone. And you're gone. Something like that. So 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 there used to be a lot of uh, anxiety and uh, you know like a dysphoria, you know dysphoria, you know that kind of situation. So a lot of anxiety. Anyways, uh, I said that no, but we can't be in a state of perpetual anxiety. So then I thought of this piece after coming from the desert, calling venture some kisses. It's because a, it's, it's you know, beautiful words, venture Marco, some cases. Venture some cases. Very romantic. Marco. Very romantic, <laughs> but but yes. but it's not for Amavaga. You remember that? Yeah, it's not for Amavaga. yeah, yeah. Amavaga. venture some. You know, yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta have some guts. <laughs> I feel Amavaga. Right? <laughs> I feel Amavaga. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that small plant, you know, has got the guts mm. to hatch its pets on the heavens. Well, that's, that's where the rain will come from. So now I wrote that piece called Venturesome Kisses, and then that piece became a midwife of this book called The Sacred Knowledge of the Desert, African Philosophical Transcendence. Mm -hmm. You see, so mm -hmm. Venturesome, so, so A Woman in the Bush is more of my auto autobiographical, experience, autobiographical experiences right. using what I call contextual poetry. Mm -hmm. Yes, inspired by the village of Matamong in the Eastern Free State. In the Eastern Free State. Yes, where Which my mother village, comes from. Uh, you know, where you grew yeah. up? Yes, where I grew up, indeed, yes. yes. Yeah, where I grew up, uh, where my philosophy was shaped. And you rightfully say where your philosophy was shaped yeah. because, uh, you know, talking a dictionary of mathematics, yes, yes. Yabasut, Yabasut. that was where yeah. everything was garnered. Exactly. And of course, you became a mathematician. You went yeah. on to do... Uh, you know, software engineering, engineering yes, exactly, exactly. Yes. So, take us from those beginnings and what you learned mm -hmm. from a Sotu aspect. Mm -hmm. From a Sotu, you know, how about it's mathematics? How about yes, you know, in the sky, exactly. cosmology, yes. Um, what is their way, of course? So, um, maybe, uh it would be useful to tell a, a, a short story, a story yes, sir. Uh, about a woman in the bush. So a beautiful African woman is in the bush to gather firewood. Oya Ralla, Oya Teza. She's gathered in a bundle. So she uh, she puts, she, she, she ties the bundle. Yes. And then, uh, so, utlama mm ngadana. -hmm. Yeah, ubopa inyanda. And then, uh, from there, she puts a coil on the head. Ubeha khari suhu. Ubega ingata. Ikata. And then, from there, she lifts this bundle. Just uh, when, about halfway to the head, the lion appears and says, not so fast. Mm -hmm. And the woman says, Whoo! You know, she got scared. Say, hey, you scared me. Yes. And the lion says, I have a problem. And uh, the woman says, what is the problem? She says, um, it's a mathematical problem. But if you can solve it, I will walk away 
and never more to return. Mm. But if you can't solve it, I must eat you. Then the woman said, why would you eat me? He said, well, uh, you must ask the creator that I'm just discharging the purpose of my existence. Then the woman says, what is this mathematical problem? He says, well, we've got in a word that uh, the creator uh, will increase uh, the number of gazelles by a factor of 11. Right now, there are 11 gazelles in the, in the, in the, in the, in the grassland. Right. So we would like to know that when the creator uh, increases these gazelles by a factor of 11, how many gazelles will there be so that we can plan our life? And the woman says, well, I, I, need, to, I need to think about that. Uh, then the woman says, but you know, uh, you look scary, you know. Uh, you know, look at those teeth. It's like you're going to say, ooh, you know. So uh, you, must, you must, must look away, you know, because I, I get this anxiety when, when, when I'm scared like that. So the, the, then the, the lion agrees to make a you know, 180 degrees turn away from the woman. Then this woman uh, begins to perform the invocation of the ancestors. She's Not looking she, for that answer. Yes, and she communicated with the spirit. She says, Khatebe, Masubi, Ntimkulu, Pungani, Mashwabata. And then the spirit appears. Yes, this ancestor appears, appears and says, Hey, uh, that was urgent. Uh, what's wrong? And then uh, the woman says, Well, he wants to eat me. So why would he eat you? He says, Well, uh, he wants me to solve a mathematical problem. And the spirit says, Why don't you solve it? He says, well, because uh, there's no calculator here. He said, what are you talking about? You've got these bundle of sticks. Right. You just need a few sticks. And then from there, the spirit says, and by the way, the sticks must be in pairs. And then the spirit disappears. But you see, this is how spirits work, right? They yes. give you a hint. When you're expecting more details, they're gone. Yeah, like a dream. Exactly. Oh. You're supposed to decode yes. this. You're supposed you to... Can. Exactly. You're supposed to solve this. For you. You're gonna supposed to put some work into it. Yes. <laughs> you know? And then, so, this woman goes and she gets two sticks, three sticks, and she remembers the voice that says, the spirit that says, they must be in pairs. in pairs. So she must take the fourth one. So she takes four sticks. And then so she creates something like a box with these four sticks, uh, four corner. And then she collects four rocks. And then she puts one rock on each corner. And then from there, she goes to the top left corner. And then she counts the number of rocks. There's only one rock in the corner. So she writes one on the ground. And then she goes to the bottom left corner. And she reads, the, she counts the number of rocks in a diagonal fashion. So there are two rocks. So she writes two on the ground. So, so far she's got 12, 12 on the ground. And then she goes to the bottom right corner. She counts the number of rocks. That's only one. She puts one. And so she has got 121. So she's not quite sure if, you know, and she must get it right the first time. Mm. So then the, 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 the voice of the spirit says, yeah, it doesn't get better than that. Then she calls the lion and says, there will be 121 gazelles. And you can check your calculator if you multiply 11 times 11 and see, <laughs> and see what you get. <laughs> Togos of a course. Togos of a course. <laughs> 11 times 11. Times 11. Yes. 121. Makos. Togos of a course. Yes. But check this out. Yeah. Uh, she did not use a multiplication method, but she solved the problem. Right. That's a paradigm shift. That is the philosophy of science, African philosophy of science. Mm. You see, so these are the principles that I learned at this village of Matamum in the Eastern Free State. And that's what inspired me to write a Sesotho Dictionary of Mathematics. Oh, uh, to write even this book as the sacred knowledge of the desert, that book, uh, there's a section there that has um, the history of the calculator in that book. Mm. And uh, it's amazing that uh, 
when you do Google about the calculator, I'm sure it will say uh, the first calculator that was invented is the European calculator. Mm. But nothing could be further from the truth. So in that book, I make the point that uh, there was a calculator called Muruba, which is currently engraved on the rock in Mapungube, in Limpopo. Yes. Uh, that calculator predates the advent, the, the invention, the European invention of a calculator called arithmometer by more than 800 years. Mm. And, 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 and it was invented by um, a, a, a French engineer, mm. you see, Jean, his name. So, and, 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 and now maybe some uh, Europeans might say, well, but uh, there was a, a Leibniz of Germany who invented a calculator. Yes, Leibniz invented a calculator around the 1700s, but that calculator did not work. Yes. It, it wasn't didn't. conducive. No, it, it couldn't work. It just couldn't didn't work. work. Yes. yes. The invention must work, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. get an intellectual property of a certificate because your invention has got an industrial application. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not just a theoretical thing. Yes. So his calculator never worked. He could not add numbers like this beautiful African woman. You know who who who, who saw the soil sticks exactly the exactly, exactly yes. yes so so that did not work now another one might say well but uh, there was a slight rule yes I know about the slight rule I uh, in Canada I learned the slight rule they were using a slight rule in 1989 when I landed there mm. but a slight rule is not a calculator because a slight rule is a lookup table you see that. So, for example, if you want to multiply, let's say, 11 times 11, yes. so you would, you, would, uh, you, you would point at one and point, sort of point at 11, point at another 11, mm. and then it would give you 121. But it's a lookup table. I see. Whereas a calculator is, has to be real-time input. The calculator does not need to know beforehand what are the numbers to be calculated. It has to be agnostic in that sense. In real time. In real time. Yes. Exactly. Like you see, that calculator of this African woman is agnostic. It didn't know. But he just gave it the information and it solved it in real time. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about the calculator. So technologically, mm. we are far ahead and we've always been. Very much so. Very much so. And the basics are there. But the, we don't exactly. Utilize them. Exactly. Yes. And unfortunately, we have also lost the the software. We have lost the the algorithm because you see, when you go to this Moruba today, Moruba is used as a game when they play game and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, game is part of it, but uh, uh, most importantly, it was a calculator. You see that. So they have lost the algorithm. You see that. So now, uh, this is why I came back from exile in 2010. And then when I landed here, it was, of course, FIFA, which was great. And then in 2011, I registered a, a company called Madisebo University uh, College Press. Yes. And the purpose of that was to conduct research. Then I established a research institute called Madiseba University Research Institute, which is a project of this company. Mm -hmm. And my goal was to do research. And we've got a mission statement that says, which is based on three principles, um, to retrieve, to reconstruct, and to produce new knowledge of African origin. Yes. Uh, so we have we are not so so basically it means we do not source knowledge from Europe. <laughs> like it's the case right now with universities, our school system, mm -hmm. they source knowledge from Europe. You know, Charles Dickens, Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, Shakespeare, and stuff like that. So in our case. We source knowledge from the African ground. Mm. When we make examples, it's African stories. Mm. Yeah, we must do this. Because, you see, I was commissioned by the ancestors of the Basutu. Mm. Yes, Basutu ancients 
they chose me to be a conduit to bring African origin of knowledge to the masses in order to emancipate the Malane. Big responsibility, Makos. Oh, absolutely, Makos. Are you up, absolutely? Are you up for it? Oh yes. I, I, nobody will do it better than me. <laughs> Nine in good. Exactly. Hey, good Linda. Oh, no, no. <laughs> nobody will do it better than me. <laughs> yes. Um, in fact, uh, like in this institute here. Uh, now, this place I'm at, this is Santon, right? This is, we are on the street of Nelson Mandela Square here. Mm. So, on the other side of Catherine, it is Fifth Street. And when you cross Catherine, it becomes Johar. They call it the richest mile in Africa. Oh, it? my gosh. Square, yes. Square mile. Yeah, Square yeah mile. look yes. at that. In Africa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, some people say to me, why don't you establish your school in a township? I says, yes, I would like to do that because those are my people who are working for them. But now in Dabin Kuru. Kusa vela, indo talapa, indo temyama, ipeti pote la lepia. And iso kamela mabonda. Now, izi nyanya lezi, zine stones. They are tuktela. They are tuktela. Yes, yes, they are tuktela. So that's why I am here. But it's not easy, right? Because this is an expensive place. Uh, and there are times when, uh, you know, at the end of the month, Nishawa Ufa, you know, they're yes. going to kick me out. But I have been here for more than eight years. Wow. No funding from any institution. Mm. And that's for a purpose, you see. Because when you receive funding, they have conditions, strings attached to say, you know, change your policy here. Changes. We are not going to emancipate the melanin like that. Yes. He who pays the bills controls the narrative. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Controls the narrative. Exactly. Mm. He who pays the piper. Mm. Mm. The piper must play the tune. Mm. So uh, so that's that's what it is. So I took my life savings when I came back uh, from Canada and established this institution. You see? And then we continue forward to, to back the trend. Exactly. So, uh, so we sell books, of course, uh, that helps to, you know, bring in some funds. Yes. But nobody controls us. We are independent. So one of the things that I have to do, I have to send you our handbook. We have a handbook, Madiseba University yes. handbook. So we can look at the curricula. And the exact, and, yeah. offer. and the philosophy. Yes. So our institute, institution is independent. Mm. So that means it is independent from official dome, is independent from the ECC, Euro-Christian colonialism, is, is independent from the white god, from the white doors. Actually, uh, if your people, you know, um, audience uh, does Google uh, white god, white doors, I wrote that. They will, they, you know, they will, they will read more about that. So, so that's the whole idea. And actually, in the first week of, um, of, of December this year, we'll be having a book launch. Yes. Wonderful. We're launching a book there called uh, Indigenous Knowledge uh, Systems in the 21st Century. You see that book there. So that's going to be your ninth book. Yes, yes, yes. Recognizing book. Actually, recognizing actually, worth. actually, it's going to be the 11th. More than, it's actually more than 10 books I've written. So that will be the 11th one. So that'll be the, that's, this is the 11th. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh. And then, and that excludes, of course, hundreds of manuscripts that are not published. And articles, yeah. Yes, because we are, you know, the finances are the ones that control the output, you know. And, and that's why I'm so excited with this show, because people will get to see what we do, and then uh, we'll get more supporters that way, and, and all the power to you for that. We give thanks. To that. And these uh, manuscripts, uh, Marcos, where do you gather them in as far as, you know, those writings? Are, mm. are they uh, within Southern Africa? Yes. Or do you go everywhere within uh, the continent? We know there's lots of manuscripts out in Timbuktu. Yeah, it's true, instance. yes. Yes. So in our case, uh, so the manuscripts I was just talking about, these are the ones written by me. Ah, I over see. Over a period of more than 40 years. I see. Yes. Uh, which are not published yet. And then... Um, so, and then from there, I also have other manuscripts. These are medical manuscripts. So I attended a doctor school of the Basuto in the Free State, what they call Mopato Wabungaka. And then uh, when I became convocated there as a doctor practitioner, uh, I was made a custodian of these ancient 
medical manuscripts mm. written by the African Indians. <laughs> Ah, makosa mas, makosa mas. Nine have been good, and uh, and, yes. and 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 those manuscripts are powerful. Mm. They describe how uh, different medicine plants, how diseases they cure, stuff like that. I see. Oh, they are very powerful. Everything is there. These manuscripts. So, uh, so we will, we would like to raise funds so that uh, you know we can get more money, and then we will digitize those manuscripts. And then after digitizing them, we have to transcribe transcribe them, mm -hmm. and then um, and then kind of rewrite them because currently uh, I can give you those manuscripts, you won't be able to read them. You see, they are written in Sesotho. They are written in Sesotho, and also even the the symbols used, you know, coded language. Yeah, exactly. For the most coded language, we can say that absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, so we have to do all that stuff, but they are powerful. Uh, so, for, let me just give you just a few things. So, at some point, I was, uh, so I began uh, studying this doctoral medicine in 2013 and uh, graduated in 2017. So, uh, so now this school is a private school, independent, uh, independent of official door. Nine up. Don't Capturing. Exactly. Yes. Because <laughs> again, you know, they've got the concept of accreditation and stuff like that. Yes. And when you read this accreditation thing, it is it is the white establishment. And even the type of money they charge is a lot of money. Somebody in the village cannot op establish a university. There. Mm -hmm. And yet we had universities here before the, before the advent of the Europeans. Oh, yeah, in ancient times. Exactly. A doctor is produced everywhere. by a university. Yes. You see that? Yes. We, had, we had all that. So as George G. James would say, um, Greek uh, philosophy is stolen yeah. African um, knowledge. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. From Kemet and exactly. Nubia. Yes. You know? In the book, yes. in the Sesotho Dictionary of Mathematics, I pursue that topic of the, um, the contribution, African contribution of mathematics to world civilization. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, uh, Plato studied, uh, spent about 13 years, you know, in ancient Kemet, yes. studying mathematics and philosophy, logic and stuff like that. Um, Pythagoras that we read about, um, you know, we, we remember in, in high school when you yeah. used to say Pythagoras theorem. theorem. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> and at that point, uh, we didn't, even, I didn't even know that Pythagoras is actually a person. Yes. <laughs> so Pythagoras, uh, his teacher, mm. uh, uh, is the one who encouraged him to go to Kemet because his teacher had gone to Kemet to study. So Pythagoras spent 23 years, imagine. So that's how long it took eh, to graduate from a university at the time. Uh. So, yeah, and then he studied mathematics then. Mm -hmm. So what is called today Pythagorean theorem is actually a Kemetic theorem. Uh. But, but now, you know, the writers of history are now attributing it to, to Pythagoras. Now check this out. History he who skewed. wins the war writes the history. History, was, was, in general for yeah, history yes. was skewed. And, yes. and if you look at the name yeah. Kemet, yes. Black Land. Yes, Black Land. Is yes. exactly what it says. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So by Tatela. By, by Tatela. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's interesting to talk about Black Land because I'm going to actually the, the Nile. Uh, is of course associated with Egypt, Kemet, but actually the Nile is from Central Africa and East Africa. So uh, there are two types. They've got the White Nile and the Blue Nile. Mm. The Blue Nile comes from Ethiopia. Yes. Right? And then the White Nile comes from Uganda, Kenya, Congo, Congo. Rwanda, many countries, I think it's more than 10 countries that are a source of the Nile. Of the Great Nile. Yes, yes. And 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 so uh, and and so now this black land, they call it like that because uh, you see these waters come from mountains. So mountains uh, are volcanic. So they bring in the volcanic soil. The volcanic soil is black. Mm -hmm. You see. So hence they call it uh, Kemet. Black land. Black land, exactly. 
And and this volcanic soil is extremely rich. If you go to you mean in minerals? Oh yes, yes. oh yes. The best soil is volcanic soil. Mm. Mm. Uh, for example, in Canada, you know, Canada is all ice. They don't have you know. Yeah, my goals. Night, I'm a cool. That's right. But it's interesting that uh, if yes. you go to countries like Colombia, so Colombia is very volcanic, and Colombia produces some of the greatest fruits on the planet because of the volcanic soil. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. So volcanic soil is is nutrient rich. Yes, but it's also a medicine. The medicine plants that grow from there. In the Free State, we have so in Susutu, a uh, volcanic is called Nkukumui. Uh, Nkuku? Nkukumui. Nkukumui. Oh, I see. Yes. Ukukumoa is to rise. To rise. Mm. Yeah. Like it tombo. Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called Nkukumui, meaning uh, the great spirit of the volcano. Interesting. Exactly. Yes. Quite interesting. Yeah. We have that in the Free State. And and you find that uh, the water, actually, uh, you find there is this uh, uh, smoke, this mist that rises you know, these vapors, mm. hot, hot springs that come from that, mm. you know, yeah, in the free state. Now, that's why we need to solve the land question because right now, as we speak... We don't get access to those areas. Yes, they block the access. The Mulongo has blocked the access there. Uh, so, and then, um, and you know that uh, the reason for our liberation struggle it was the land question. Mm. Uh, because check this out, uh, like in Maptamu, for example, uh, we still have to struggle with the land question there because Mulungu owns that place, mm. as we speak right now. You see, and then you must Google something called uh, the Battle of Khrunkop. Khrunkop, the Battle of Khrunkop. Khrunkop. So Khrunkop yes. is the Matamo, is the land of Matamo. I see. Yes, that's where the, the English and the British clashed there during the anglo Boer War. That was around Christmas mm -hmm. period. So, uh, Battle of Hrunkop. It says in the Battle of Hrunkop, 25th December 1901, uh -huh. head commandant Christian de Wert's Boer commando mm -hmm. surprised and defeated a force of imperial yeomanry mm -hmm. under the command of Major Williams. Exactly. And then it continues further to exactly. explain. Exactly. Of course, that's, oh. that's, that's, that's our ancestral land. Sacred land. Bethlehem, Sacred land. Orange Free State. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our land. Battle of Tue Fontaine. Yeah. That's an AKA. That's yeah, an yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, you see, I still remember the first one, Christmas. Right? <laughs> 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 1901. 1901, exactly, yeah. 1901. Yeah. So, um, so that place, Matamong, is very, very powerful. So, and we've got ancient graves there. The graves of the ancients, many centuries hmm. at that, in that land. So, oh, Kokobi, to Kokobame, our, you know, Ba ba le le la, o o o o cool, ba le le la. Are these the graves that supersede? Yes. Bo mo shwe shwe so. Oh, of course, of course, of mm. course. They're very, very ancient. Yes, very mm. ancient. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So we have that there, and then uh, right now is under the stranglehold of the Mlungos. Mm. You see, but but that 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 has to change. I'm not a believer in complaining or blaming. I'm a believer in doing. Yes. You see, uh, when I was in, in a hospital, when I was injured in hospital last year, the mm. voice came to me and said, we do not, gave me three principles. Number one, we do not criticize. We do not blame. We forge ahead. Mm. Solutions. Solutions in photo mode. You see, that handbook I'm going to send you, uh, we've got two chapters in that one. The one is a chapter of teaching and learning. The other one is a charter of African axioms of success. Mm. You see? So one of the axioms there says that uh, do not cry racism. Leverage the original sin of capitalism mm. and build the success. Exactly. Do not cry racism. Yes. Leverage yes. Yes. The capital sin. Yes, the original sin of, of, original capitalism. Sin of capitalism. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. 
Because you see, when we complain, we are justifying our inaction. Mm. Right? Because now you don't have to do anything because there's somebody to blame. Mm. So when we criticize, we are justifying our mediocrity because attention is being pointed away from us to somebody else. So we have to take action. We as have in yesterday, my As in course. yesterday in Fultomot. Yes. yes. As in yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. So when I started this project of Madisebo University Research Institute, I did not uh, bother about, you know, organizing people to get together and say, okay, democratically, uh, who, who believes that uh, we should do, how many people support this? No, 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 no. That's a waste of time. Because you see, uh, people, we are still caught up in this blaming and thing, you know. Oh, you know, capitalism, oh, racism here and stuff like that. Yes, there are legitimate claims for that. Definitely, no question about that. But we need to transcend. That's why that book is called Transcendence. Mm. We need to transcend this. Yes. You see, uh, we have to be like, uh, for example, like, you know, in that book, we define the, the word uh, transcendence to mean undefined. How about that? Mm. Yes. Undefined. Undefined. That's our dis- definition of transcendence. That trans- transcendence means undefined. So meaning you are undefined by the adverse conditions. Mm of the traditional space. Like a fish, you know, uh, a fish, uh, you know, is born in an extremely salty environment. But when you catch the fish, it doesn't have salt. You actually have to add salt in order to eat it. You no, know, sprinkle some lemon uh, exactly, to give yeah. it that. Exactly. Yes. But it's not defined by the salty environment. Uh, so the, the fish is undefined by the salt. So, because the fish understand that if it internalizes the salt, that would kill the fish. Mm. It would die from that. Become toxic to itself. Toxic, exactly. Mm. So, even as uh, the, the, the racism, the, uh, the apartheid, colonialism, is like the salt, right? But if we internalize this, it's toxic to us. Mm. It's going to damage the internal organs. Marcos, I'm, I'm reading it a text here underneath of course. The, the sacred knowledge of uh, the desert, mm. African philosophical transcendence. Mm. I'm trying to read <laughs> the letters underneath. Yes, Makos. Uh, I'm yes. trying to decipher or decode, yes, so to speak. Yes, yes. Makos. So, <laughs> so please, that's, an African, that's an indigenous African writing system of the, of the Basotho. Yes. But that can be used to write any language really in, in our land of Azania, South Africa. Uh, basically, uh, you know, there's this popular myth that when the colonizers arrived here, Africans did not know how to read and write. Mm. And they taught our ancestors to read and write, and they're referring to the ABCD. Yes. But actually, our ancestors had writing systems. They were not using the alphabet system, mm. but they were using symbols yes. to write. You see. So, uh, and, and here is an interesting thing. Uh, there's a discovery that was made around maybe uh, 91, give and take, something like that, at a cave called Blombos in Cape Town. And in this cave, there, there are three things they found. One is a rock of Lizoku. Mm-hmm. Lizoku, you know Lizoku? When, mm-hmm. when people go in the, well, the so-called mountain school or initiation, yes. Yeah. That is a in mm-hmm. uh, what you call in English ochre. Ah, I yes. yes. So they found a rock of red ochre there, Lizoku. And this rock had uh, geometric uh, designs, mostly uh, triangles. You see. They also found, and that rock is dated at 70,000, more than 70,000 years old. And they found also, <coughs> sorry, they found also a, a bone, a bone. Mm. Uh, these bones, uh, uh, this particular bone actually is interesting, is a, is a mandible bone, so meaning a jaw type of bone. Okay. Now, as you know, Africans use bones as a slate, right, to write. Mm. Right. Oh, uh, as counting devices as, as well. As counting devices yes. as well, in general, for the most. And also speaking, as yes. divination. Yes. Divination no, is, 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 is a mathematical system. Mm. <laughs> you see? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, 
the, the computer system uses a number system called binary system, zeros and one. You know where that comes from? It comes from the African from definition the system. Yes. Because you listen to Sangoma, Ozati, uh, Vuma. Vuma is yes, right? Yes. So yes is one. Or Asivomi, that's no, and that is zero. 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 That's, it comes from that. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. But they will not give us the credit. But you see, we shouldn't worry about that. Tina, we must write about this knowledge because it is our knowledge. Mm. Yes, we must write about it. So going back now to this example I was giving about the bones at Blombos. So this particular bone is, is, a, is a jaw bone, so it's really like a slate. And they write, there's a writing there. So I'm an expert in indigenous writing systems, and I looked at that. That system has got syntax. It's a, it's a syntactical, symbolic system. Hmm. That's quite interesting, because Very. according to European history, what is known as um, uh, uh, symbolic behavior is attributed to Europe, particularly France, because of the abstract art, abstract art on the... On the, on the caves. Mm. Well, this discovery in Plumbos, in the land of Azania, predates European symbolic systems by more than 30,000 years. Oh. Tell us about by more than 30,000 years. By more than 30,000 years. We've been here, mm. haven't we? We've been yeah. here. Yes. And the Sasekona Nama. Of course. And they will still be here. We'll still be here. And they say we've been all over the world. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, no. before anybody. No, 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 it's true. I mean, I, uh, well, actually, good start, Canada. So, you know, the people were called Eskimos, right? Ice people. Yes, the ice people. They are called, I think the name is used is Inuit. Yes. Inuit, sir. yes. Actually, it's interesting. Uh, there is an African who left West Africa. He came from a country called Congo. Uh, sorry, uh, Togo, Togo. Togo. Yes. He left. His name is Michel uh, Popo Kipomasi. Uh, yes. Michel Popo Kipomasi. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. So Kipomasi. So K P O M A. S, I think S S I E, something like that. It almost sounds French. Yeah, I know he is French. Yes, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a French. francophone. It's a French francophone. Word. Yes, yes. yes. Or oh, actually, the uh, um, Michel Michel Popo Collective. There's an Instagram account. I oh, think. that's interesting. I think that's their interesting. That, Instagram that is, account. yeah, that's the name of the of the explorer. He's an explorer. So, guys, follow follow on Instagram. That's mm. Michel Popo Collective oh, on Instagram. I yes. think there's a lot to learn from. Yeah, that. very interesting. interesting. So Popo Kipomasi left Africa and landed in the North Pole as an explorer. I think it's the first time in history the explorer coming from the south to the north. How about that? Mm. Yes. Mm. 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 And, there was, and he wrote a book called... Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to... Yeah, no, no, no not a problem. <laughs> to to yes. He wrote a book called An African in Greenland. So you must look for that book, African in Greenland. An African in Greenland. Yes, okay. an African in Greenland. BBC TV created a documentary called An African Eskimo. Mm. Mm. And there are similarities because when you look at uh, their housing yeah. structures, yes. the Eskimos, yes. they call them igloo. Igloo, yeah, that's cool. And then yeah, call in. in I don't for it. And I'm going to tell you more about that. Please do, Makos. <laughs> so, so uh, Basutu create what they call Mutlamafati in Zulu, e. Ikukwane. Ikukwane. Right? E. Although I must say, uh, on the Basutu, it's a bit of a, <clears throat> sorry, it's a bit of a dying culture, this architecture. It's still there, but you don't find a lot of it. The Zulus must give it to them. They've kept it alive, hmm. vibrant. Yeah, you must must give it to them, you know. Uh, if I was to create, uh, you know, if I was to become a president of this country, I think Zulus would, would be responsible for the Department of Indigenous Knowledge Systems. Because, because my, my man had it. Ah, no, preserved, no. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And I would also put Bapo, Bapo Edi there. Mm. Bapo Edi, they are also very, very powerful, you know. And Basutu will be there as well, but, uh, you know, uh, so, and, and the Tosas as well, you know. So, anyways, so this is Kokwanige, this uh, dome-shaped uh, structure. Uh, those people of 
the Inuit. They came from Azania. Hmm. Yes. They're actually black. But what's interesting is that in winter, they are brown-skinned, like almost pale. Then in summer, they become dark. That's amazing. Mm. Oh. I was discussing this with another friend of mine uh, called um, uh, Kabelo Muguina. He's based right on the North Pole. You see, he's attending a university there, doing his university studies. Yes. And, we, and he was giving more information because he actually lives there. About the climate. How, yes. How, how he feels. Exactly. How, how it's impacting yes. on his skin. Exactly. And, and he was nature. telling me, uh, definitely, Mucholoko, they are in summer, they are black. Mm. There's a lot of them. Ilela. In, exactly. Yeah, Ilela. They're the melanin. So they have the melanin. Yes, not the melanin, a paratic ball. Exactly. So they are our people. They came from right here in Azania. That's why they call it Iglu. 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 Yes, yes, when yes. The, when we learned to call Iglus, Iglu. Yes. Iglu. That's where it comes from. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Now, even them, when they pronounce, they say Iglu. You see, they don't say Iglu. <laughs> So, so now, um, uh, and that is, now here is an interesting thing, the architectural design. You see, the, it's the same architectural design we do here. Exactly. The dome-like. The dome-like, exactly. Mm. And, I, know, and Kanye West has been speaking about building those. Yes. And Kanye West has been delving too much lately on African spirituality. Oh, my God. Very, Very interesting. Ah, we, Very give, interesting. We, we give thanks to that. Very interesting. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. The great Kanye West. We give mm. thanks to mm. that. Absolutely, yes. Mm. So, so they are our people from here, right from here. Mm. And here is an interesting thing. If you look at the, the, the Sen, you know, the Koi, they have the same features as the, the Inuit. Same eyes. Uh, the only difference is the hair, right? But same eyes, same stature, same brown skin. So they're from here. Yes, they're from here. And we're not going to allow Mlungu to, 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 to tell our history. We have to do it. We have to do it ourselves. Yes, yes yeah. Because in most cases, you know, when we've allowed yeah. that, yeah. we've been misinformed yeah. for centuries, uh, Makos. Makos. You yes, know, about yeah. our very own history. Yes, miseducated. Yes. Yes. So yes. Uh, we have to now relearn. Exactly. And it's Important. up to us to initiate that process yes. by ourselves. Yeah. And we must. So, no, we must. We must. And, and so, uh, and it's quite interesting. So I lived with uh, uh, the Aboriginal peoples of Canada mm. and even the Aboriginal peoples in, the, in Latin America. In Canada, we would dub them the, the Red Indians? Or yeah, but, but some... actually there is many nations. The, so you've yes. got the, uh, the, the school I went to is called Algonquin. So the Algonquin is named from the Aboriginal people. Uh, you've got the Cree. Mm. Uh, you've got the uh, Mi'kmaq. Mm. Uh, you've got the Ojibwe. Okay. Yes, I, I write about it in that book, uh, A Woman in the Bush. Mm. Yes, I pay tribute to them. Yes. And, and now check this out. They're also a big part of Australia, right? Although, uh, although I hear over the recent years, the, mm. their population has lessened, the Aboriginal people. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. And, and I would also say that some of them from Azania, they are the ones who went to Australia and New Zealand. I guess the name also Abu original. Exactly, exactly. Original. Person. Original, exactly. Exactly, 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 yeah. So, um, so that's why then I attribute all this to uh, this village in the Free State, Matamu, because it is the ancestors of that nation that commissioned me to do this work. Mm. And nobody will do it better than me. Whew. Uh, you know, uh, I've, I've got one of the great, my greatest followers. He lives in the U.S. Mm. So about two weeks ago, I think more than two weeks, I there was a, a, a workshop we organized. It's a postgraduate workshop. Uh, it was organized by the Northwest University in Mafike. Mm. Uh, so I was, I, was uh, I came to deliver a lecture there. So my lecture was titled uh, Conceptualization of Knowledge. Indigenous epistemology, cosmology, and axiology. Mm -hmm. So that's that was my topic, and uh, and then after and there were many speakers there, of course. So I was one of many speakers. So this fellow of mine, uh, he calls me and he says, "You know that that session was very powerful, but your presentation 
is different from other participants. Mm. Right? Uh, because you see, your normal academic, when they're going to give a lecture, they will go do Google, uh, read articles, and then prepare their lecture like that. I don't do that. What do you do, Marcos? So I draw <laughs> from Omsamo, I draw from the ancestors. Mm. You remember that calculator of that woman? Yes, yes. She does not draw from academic <laughs> stuff. Mm. Yeah, otherwise she would not have solved that problem. Mm. Yeah. So she draws from, from the, the ancest soul. ancestors. Yeah. Yes. That ancestral spirit who told her that you've got a calculator. Yes. So I work like that. You see, I work like that. Quite impressive. Yes. So, Your oh, sorry, go ahead, sir. Yeah, Mako. So, Mako ahead, Samad. so I, I do that because uh, you know, knowledge, the ability of knowledge to solve a problem it depends on how it was conceptualized. Mm. So conceptualization of knowledge is extremely important. Mm. They can talk about methods, research methods, uh, epistemology, whatever, but all those things are based on conceptualization. So for example, the word no, uh, in the English language, no, uh, knowledge. So the word no actually comes from Middle English. So Middle English, we're talking about from the 11th century to the 16th century. So it starts from the Norman conquest of England, which mm. took place in 1066. Now, the word no come from akno, but akno is obsolete. You will never find it in a dictionary. Yes. But that's actually where the word no comes from. It comes from akno. To Rosa are you Marcos. saying the word no as in N O or N no, K. or K N O yeah, exactly. W? Yeah, hey. Okay. That comes from Akno. Yes. A C K, you know, mm. N O W comes yes. from that. And then the word knowledge comes from acknowledge. Mm. You see. And basically it's about acknowledging the master. You know, the slave master. So, so basically, the, the conceptualization of knowledge is based on a master-servant relation, relations, master-servant relationship model. So then I, I, then I said, but who was this master yes. that, they, that they had to acknowledge? Mm. So, uh, so England was conquered in 1066 by the Normans. The Normans are the Vikings. Now, we know the Vikings are from Scandinavia, right? Yes. But actually, these Vikings did not come from Scandinavia. They came from France, from north of France. So these were French-speaking Vikings mm -hmm. that conquered England. And actually, even when you look at the map, Google map, you'll notice that the English Channel is very close to, to France. In fact, there is a train that was built underground, and, and underwater, that is, that connects England and France. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wow. Yes. So, and those Normans, the word Norman actually in French means a North man, the man of the North. Mm -hmm. Yeah, referring to these Normans. So they came and conquered England in 1066. 1066. Exactly. And then they said, we are the masters. We are the lords. You have to acknowledge us. And that's, that forms the conceptualization of the word no. Now check this out. Uh, in schools, official old schools, uh, they have the concept of what schoolmaster. Yeah? See that? Mm. Exactly. Yes. exactly. And, and the student is supposed to address the master as sir. So the word sir comes from the French word sire. You see, sire. When you are saying sire, you are saying master mm. you know, or lord. Mm. Now, the French don't use that, that word anymore, but now it has remained in what is called Monsieur. Monsieur. So, Monsieur, the word Monsieur means my Lord, my Master. Monsieur. Exactly, in French. So, uh, uh, so now, uh, the student is the servant and the teacher is the master. The master. But there's a bigger master, the principal, eh? You know, yes. the schoolmaster. Yes. Exactly. Of course. Yes. So, so knowledge is not uh, politically neutral. Yes. It's uh, got all of these It has got its own ideology. It has own, its own dogma. It's hierarchies. Exactly. Yes. 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 Mm. 
and 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 so even today it's still playing out like that so for example uh, you go to university to take a degree you learn to be a doctor lawyer whatever the case might be if you do not have money you don't have access to that knowledge yes so it's still master servant situation I would like to ask a, a, a very quick question My without course. disturbing you, sir. What is the relationship between the oceans or the ocean knowledge mm. and the English language? Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Yes, very. that's quite interesting. You know, the Zulu word will answer that, Luazi. So the word Luazi. So there is Lua and then there is Z. The word Lua means... Um, the extent, the boundary, the extent, the vast expanse. That's what Loire means. Mm. And then Z means the water, the primordial water. So when they say Loire, they're saying uh, you must know the extent of the bodies, of the large bodies of water, the ocean you're talking about. Uluanle. Uluanle. Loire. Loire. Oh my God. You see there, because a lot. Of, yeah, sorry. Continue, yeah, sir. And because uh, sure. I also just want people to understand why I'm asking mm. this question. In the English language, mm. there's a lot of things that are constructed around mm. um, words that mm. are that's that, that are that are about the sea or about the ocean. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. So yes. continue, sir. Sure, sure, Marcos, Yes, and then cash flow. Mm. Yeah, cash flow. <laughs> exactly, cash flow. You know, uh, there's many, but yes, no, in general, for for too much. And, yes. and, and and basically, um, I, I believe that a lot of these English words uh, came from the African continent, but without giving us the credit. Let's make an example. Uh, there's a word called uh, ba, right? So ba. So abandu, for example, like muntu, abandu, ba. Uh, and then in uh, Susutu, ba, like ba too, you see. So the word ba uh, means, it's actually spirit, ba. Bana, banna. Ba, ha, bana, banna, basad. Yeah. Exactly. So ba refers to the, to the spirit of, of plurality, but it's actually the feminine uh, principle and the masculine principle, they all get together there. Totally. They become ba. Uh, and that's why you can say basadi, you can say banna. And then in terms of ma, ma is a feminine principle of plurality, you see, and, and, and stuff like that. So having explained the loa, loazi in Zulu, and, and loa and limanzi and stuff like that, then, uh, uh, so, so now come back to ba. So if you listen to English word, like for example, uh, the, what do they say? They say bi, bipolar. Binary. So the Greeks, when they took this with ba, they used by to mean two. You see that? Yes, by. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. That is mm. of chemetic, sorry. That's mm. of chemetic origin, actually. You mm. see, it comes from, yes. And we're all connected with chemet. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. So, uh, for example, there's another word, BD, right? So BD means uh, two. Dual two, yeah, exactly. Twice. So now, if you analyze that word, there is P and then there is D. Yes. So P describes existence, something that exists. For example, CP, which is the antelope. Mm -hmm. So the antelope exists. That's why it's called P. P can to a pillar. So CP a pillar. And then there is also a the pay also means something you cannot exist without. For example, pelo. Pelo. Yes. The well, heart. Yes, the heart. You need it. You yes. can't exist without that. Mm. Pelo. See African ancients. Huh? They are amazing. And then the D describes the primordial water of creation. The water that came from the cosmic egg. You see. Mm. So, uh, so basically then, PD means... In addition to the number two, it yes. means in order for existence to materialize, it must be based on the principle on, on two inputs, namely the feminine principle yes. and the masculine principle. The feminine input 
and the masculine input. Litele chibapedi. Aritele dije. Exactly. No, tell us that for Aritele dije. And it's interesting you mentioned Bapedi because Bapedi yes. were actually given this heritage, this cosmology. Yes. That's why they're called Bapedi. Yes. They were given that that your mission is to teach them about the sacred principles of Bapedi. Because Bapedi is very key. It is actually uh, the genesis of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. When you listen to the Basutu, so Basutu have got something called uh, Sisiu. Sisiu in Zulu it will be in Ngoloba. Ngoloba. Yeah, the granary mm. where you put Amabele and stuff like this. Yes. And then, uh, so in Susutu is called Sisiu. Mm -hmm. Is named after a star system called Dosa Masiu, which is Sirius. Sirius A or B? Uh, no, 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 the whole serious system. The whole serious system yes, without... Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I, I describe that, of course, in that book. Page yes. 24, if you look at page 24. Right. And 25. Yes. Yes, you will see, uh, I describe the... So you the describe that version. whole cluster. Yeah, yeah, the whole... Yeah, exactly. Serious yes. cluster. Exactly. Yes, yes. And then when it starts, it says the introduction, this chapter provides the genesis yes. of the cosmic knowledge of yeah. Dumelang. Yeah. yeah. The tri Actually, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, it's 24, is it? Oh, this is 24, yeah, sorry, yeah. 24. The Genesis. This is yes, the, gen the Genesis. Yeah. So you want to start from the Genesis. Oh, the Genesis. Yes. The Basotho, like other Africans, trace their Genesis to the cosmos. They originate from Mukubu Wakhanari, mm -hmm. the... The author expresses gratitude to Dr. Kakiso Muloi and his family mm -hmm. of Namibia mm -hmm. for making it possible for the author to visit Namibia and experience the Namib Desert. Yes. And it says here... The former councillor class in the Namibian parliament mm. who traveled with, I think, with you guys. Yes, yes. And exactly. provided narrative accounts yes, of the desert. Yes, exactly. Yes. The people of the desert yes. and the Atlantic Ocean yes. is remembered. Of course. Also, with us was Nobeth, the son of the Herero Paramount yeah. Chief, yes. Vekeu Rukor, oh, the Basutu greeting. Yes, I think mm. he just passed away uh, maybe early this year or something like that. Yes, oh, yes, may yes. peace be with yeah, his family. Yeah, may peace be with you, absolutely, yes. So now, if you go to page 25. Yes, sir. Yes. And just read uh, the first paragraph there. Okay, let's yeah. go to page 25 yes. and read the first paragraph. Yeah. That's what the Genesis says. Eh? Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> the Galactic Core, yeah. one of their most valued stars in Tosa Masiu, yeah. in brackets Sirius, yeah. which is regarded as a tenary star system. They refer to the orbiting star of Tosa Masiu, mm. known as Peu Yamakaka, yeah. the seed of Makaka. Yeah. Makaka is not visible to the naked eye. Another star, Mabeleha, a fertile woman sogam is not visible to a naked eye. Yes. And as if that is not incredible enough, Basutu also play or pay, they pay tribute to Tosa, in brackets, Jupiter. Mm. Their astronomical axiom says, Hobona Tosa limadiniana ayona, meaning to see Jupiter along with its youngs. The youngs refer to the moons of Jupiter. Mm. These moons are not visible to the naked eye. Exactly. Wow. Sounds like poetry. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Talking about that serious star cluster, mm. I've done some reading and, uh, you know, the great uh, Dogon people. Oh, yes. The great Dogon of Mali. Are masters. Oh, yes. Of, yeah. uh, you know, navigating their way through or their yes. lives through that those uh, particular star systems. That's right. Serious A, serious uh, Yes. Yes. Give us more knowledge on those great people and how then, you know, this knowledge, uh, you know, sort of uh, ties in mm. with the Basutu cosmic knowledge as well. Ah, um, of course. It, it adds on to that, the next paragraph yeah. as he's answering it, it connects. Yeah. Paul, let me just read the next sure. paragraph Please that continues that. from that. It connects actually to your question. Yes. It says, how could they have known about the orbiting stars of Tosamasiu yes. without being assisted by some instrument? How could they have known of the invisible moons of Jupiter? without a technological instrument of any kind, mm. the Basutu know about invisible stellar bodies. This is yet another confirmation that they are indeed from the cosmos. They don't need telescopes 
to trace their origins to the cosmos. This astronomical knowledge was passed on to them by their foremothers and forefathers across many generations and long before the advent of the Europeans in South Africa. As the late great Coco Credo Moto may so rest in peace would say, African knowledge is passed on through oral yes. explanations exactly. or oral exactly. sharing. Exactly. Yes. No, that's right. powerful. <laughs> Correct. Oh no, that's very powerful. And he has these indigenous writing symbols in his book, In the Children. Yes, 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 yes. yes. He introduced me to it 20 years ago when yeah. I was a young man. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> it's, only, it's only clicking now. Oh, no, no, we give thanks to that. We give thanks to that. Yes, sir. We the, give the, thanks the to dog that. on my course. Yes. So, but just before we get there, I wanted yes. just to add that um, um, this is where now the conceptualization, conceptualization of knowledge comes in because. Mm. They these moons of Jupiter are not visible. If you look at Jupiter at night, you will see the star, but you won't see the moons. Mm. Uh, if you, for example, um, look at these other orbiting stars of Sirius, yes, again you won't see them. You won't. Yes, I think it would be Sirius A is is uh, Sirius A would be the Sirius star itself, and then Sirius B would be this Machacha. Yes. Machacha, by the way, means caves. Mm. So Basutu are telling us that there are caves in this uh, Sirius B, mm. and these caves are very dense. Black holes? Dense. Dense. Yeah, dense. Yeah, they're yes. dense. They're they're meaning dense. you can't really lift. Even a small rock, you mm. won't be able to lift it mm. because of the density. Yes. Mm. You mm. see? And then Sirius C, they, they use the word Mabeleha. So it has to do with the seed. So what happens is that when somebody, uh, so mm. so Basutu, but I know when, when you say Basutu, by the way, we are talking about Babidi, Batswana. They are all Sutus, yes. you see. Uh, and so they've got a, a word they use called Lore, right? Sorry, uh, Lowe, not Lore, Lowe. Lowe. Yeah, there are two ways. There's Lowe and Lore, but there's Lowe. Uh -huh. Lowe describes the, the the genesis from the heavens. The cosmic genesis, yeah. Where well, there's Maruping discuss about genesis on the ground, on the earth, yeah, terrestrial. Oh. Now, lore, when somebody passes on, so they use lore. Lore is the ash. So this ash is the one, Christians use the ground, right, as soil to soil. So, so Basotu use ash. Mm. That's why they've got something mm. called tutubulu. So tutubulu, Ifanan is vivan. The only difference as is vivan is vivan samaje. But tutubulu is vivan some lord. Some lord. Mm. Yeah, even Zulus have this concept also. Tutubulu yasil. Yeah. Mm. And uh, now, unfortunately, our knowledge has gotten corrupted. Today, when people think about tutubulu, they associate tutubulu in Matlakala. Mm. But tutubulu is not one, it's a sacred, sacred. space. Because Inka, Yum Duana. In Ghana, mm. Yeah. Mohub. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It gets buried right there. And then, uh, what else? Uh, and uh, once the the the, the, uh, the the belly button falls, then that child is going to receive a new name. Mm. So, so when a child is born, they don't get the name right away. Yes. No, it doesn't work like that. It's, it's a new thing. To I see. Yeah. Mm. So that's how they, they do it. And, and then they have to have the moon the full moon <clears throat> on that particular day of naming ceremony. And then they'll say to the child, you see that moon? That is Kimo Patwahao. That is your peer. Okay. That is your class. Mpato means classmate, actually. Mm -hmm. Because there's this school that every Masuti child must go to. It's not, you know, it's called Mpato. As above, so below. As above, so below. For two. Tavos, exactly. Yeah. So they're telling the child, and this child is still little, eh? They're telling the child that that moon is up here. Whenever you get into trouble, you have nobody to talk to, you must talk to the moon. Ah, nom kubula. Yeah. Nom kubula. Yeah. <laughs> nom kubula. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So now going back to the dogons, uh, I have the greatest respect for the dogons. Oh, so do I. Ah, absolutely. So absolutely. Do I. The greatest people. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, they celebrate what they call Sigi. Mm -hmm which is about once every, I think, uh, 60 years, something like that, or 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
Yeah, it's interesting. They yeah, I think they celebrate every sixty years. Mm-hmm. Yes, but the actual revolution of the star is about fifty years. Mm-hmm. So they need this long time to prepare for for the celebration, the celebration or ceremony. So to yes, speak. it takes yes. a long time. Eh? It's a long time. Mm-hmm. Sixty have, years. Yeah, so. <laughs> they have yes. to make the mask and stuff like that. There is a um, um, University of Harvard sent a scientist there, Dr. Gagenheimer, I think it's a German name. So he actually uh, explains that, um, so the dog ones have got, you know, mask. Mm-hmm. They've got this, there's a mask that uh, is kind of the oldest mask they have, which is more than, I think, 400 years, mm-hmm. which confirms that they have been celebrating this knowledge long before the Europeans. For example, blood circulation is associated with Mike Harvey, the, the English physician. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Africans knew about blood circulation long before. And they oh, learn yes. about blood, blood, blood circulation from the star systems. Mm-hmm. You see that? Uh, I'm, I've, got some, I've got a calabash here that has got rocks that I'm going to demonstrate something uh, towards the end of our, you know, Topic. Totally. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so that's basically um, what it is. Basutu, for example, have knowledge of biological science without technological instruments. For example, they refer to a cell. They have a name for a cell, and the name is Kheha. Kheha in Susutu means a cell. A cell. Yes. Kheha. A living cell within a the body. A living cell within the body. Mm. But that cell is not visible without a microscope. Oh, yes, of course. Right. Now, I pursued this question, right? That's, 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 that's why our mission statement says to retrieve, to reconstruct, and to produce new knowledge of African origin. Mm. You see that? So, Kheha, and I described this more, I wrote an article called African Philosophy of Science and Transcendence. And you can Google that. African Philosophy of Science and Transcendence. Mm. So, basically, the... Um, I described there that the Basutu who described the cell, which is not visible to a naked eye, and they don't have a microscope, but they speak extremely well about the cell. They've got the details of the cell. And its functions. And it functions. Yeah. That's amazing. <clears throat> Sorry. So they actually conceptualize about a cell as an ant. Hmm. You see that? An ant. Then I look at an ant. I love ants. Yes. Now the ant. I love watching them as well. Oh, my God. Go on about oh, that's powerful their stuff. business. Yes. It's the most extraordinary thing. That's right. It was. <laughs> so the ant uh, has got antennas. I, I think that would be a distinguishing feature of an ant, right? The antennas. So so the Basutu then are saying that the, the cell has got antennas. That's essentially the implication of what they're saying, of their conceptualization. Hmm. Then I said, okay, but there is no biology textbook that talks about antennas and the cell. Mm -hmm. You won't find it, you know? Mm -hmm. Or even a a biology textbook that talks about uh, an ant and the cell. Are you calling it? Are you calling it? But the Vasutu, that's exactly what they say, Mm. right? Okay. So then I pursued this question. Now, when you look at a cell, a cell has got a membrane, right? Which they call a membrane. And the membrane can be modeled with, um, mathematically, with x to the power of 2. So meaning a membrane is actually a quadratic system, hmm. right? Now we go into inside the cell and there's a cytoplasm. A cytoplasm can be modeled with x to the power of 3. Now, f of x is equal to the power of 3, is equal to x, a, x cubed. And that would model the inside of the cell. It was slightly more Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. But we're there, Marcos. We're there. So, meaning that the cytoplasm <clears throat> is a cubic system. It's a cubic function, right? Right? Okay. Now, the cytoplasm, if, 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 you know, we've got organelles and stuff. So, the cytoplasm, actually, as I pursued the question, is actually sitting on top of an intricate network of filaments. Very, very microscopic filaments. Right. So the cytoplasm is sitting on top of that. Of these filaments. Of these filaments. Yes. Yes. 
although you don't see them, but it's sitting on top. And is everything moving now, Marcos? Yeah, yeah, oh yes, oh everything yes. Everything is in motion. Perpetual motion. Yes. Indeed, I hear you. So, so now, it is these filaments, along with the organelles, that give the cell the sensing capabilities. Mm-hmm. So I established that. Now, but now we have to come up with a specific example, mm. right? Otherwise, it's theoretical. Now, if you look at your lungs, your lungs have got cells called cilia. These cilia, they are the prototype of the of the end. They have antennas, <laughs> very long filaments. So uh, when you, the way your digestive system, alimentary digestive digestive system is designed, you've got of course the throat, right? So your food, your air, they all go through one channel, which is the throat. And then the throat then is going to feed into two pipes, the esophagus and the windpipe, which is the trachea. So the air has to go to the windpipe, the food, the water has to go to the esophagus. So it's not really a good design because you can choke very easily. What happens is that when the when the when the windpipe is closed, the esophagus is open. There's a, a, a certain flash there, you know. I just forgot the name of that. Mm. And when the esophagus is closed, the windpipe is open. So it's designed like that. You see. So we shouldn't eat and breathe. <laughs> no, no, you must eat and breathe. Otherwise, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just going on to that. Yeah, sure, sure. When one is working, one is closed. Yeah, yes, But the yes. body just does that. For yeah, exactly. Does that for us? Yes. So was my course. So now. In the respiratory system, you've got these cells called cilia. Mm. So the cilia are monitoring the movement of the air and water through the throat. And if the cilia thinks that the water is going to move in the wrong direction, meaning go to the to the windpipe, because you will die if water goes in there. So the cilia is going to trigger a cough. <coughs> and the purpose of the cough is to push the water oh. to the esophagus. That's why we share. Exactly. Exactly. But it is a cilia that's doing that. You see that? It's just the greatness of God. Yes. Just how it's designed. That's how it's designed. Body. Exactly, yes. And, and, and that's where, that's your, that's your end right there with the antennas. And it's interesting, the antennas of the cilia don't have to physically touch the water to know that the water is coming to the wrong direction. It can detect the small changes in the space you know, before the water reaches there. Through a vibration of some sort. Exactly. Out. And then it will trigger the cough. <coughs> right. And then the water will then go back to this uh, esophagus. Hmm. So that is the biological science of the basood. You see this? Moses? It's beautiful. It's Macaulay. beautiful, isn't it's it? It's beautiful. It, it, it just, mm. yeah, it just, mm. it just mm. makes you appreciate, you know, mm. our being and and the nature. Yes. And 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 as I always say, Makosi and Spusiso, it all lies within nature. Yes. Mm. yes. But uh, we've been so hoodwinked oh, that we don't see it yes. within this nature that yes. uh, you know we are existing in. Mm. Which, which is why now mm. I wrote this, uh, I delivered actually a lecture at the University of Johannesburg called African Philosophy of Science, you know, and that was facilitated by Professor Spaman Lazondi. So we give thanks to him for that. And so basically then um, we must encourage the young Africans to learn more about the science of the ancients. Mm. We should not shy away from mathematics. That's why I wrote that book, the sort of dictionary of mathematics. Yes, you see that. Uh, we 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 need to embrace these subjects. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Mm. You see, Professor Pamanda Zundi. Yes, Pamanda. I'm just writing down the names. Maku, Well, we are learning. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. So that's the power of African science. Mm. You see. Now that's why the ancients appointed me at the age of, of at the young age of twelve at Matamu to say that's going to be your mission, mm. and it's been your life mission. It has been my life mission, exactly. Yeah, and uh, 
uh, it's not easy in this journey because, you know, uh, we, are, we don't toe the line of the white establishment, so we don't get amafoot and stuff like that, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, before I hand it over to uh, Oput Paul, doctor, what I want to ask, which is a follow-up question to that English um, relation to yeah. oceans, I've heard a lot of people say it's not good for us as African people mm -hmm to speak the, the English language, to mm. pray in the English language, yes. et cetera. And they would say things like, an English language is actually a casting of spells. How true is that? Well, I'm not sure about the aspect of spells, so I can't really speak to that. Mm. But uh, I agree that when you talk to the ancestors, you should not use the English language. And I, I, I'm a case in point. So when I'm at Msamo, I speak Susutu. Yes, I speak Susutu. I mean, to an extent that when people ask me, um, so man, I say Kim Sutu because in my mind, Mshobo is determined by Let's You see that? Let's wait. Oh, in general. Ibele. Ibele. But have an expression that says, Tsibo ya need. Kitsibo ya let's wait. Ya let's wait. Yes. In the lead. In This book, it says somewhere, it says, Ha ili mading. Ita dula ili te. Highly see you, my ding high. How much I yang, I can't fell along my face. Oh, my bang, I'm a lang, he's a lazy. We didn't mention that he's also quite the poet. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of poetry in this book. Yeah, a lot of poetry. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. That's right. Yeah, very mm. important. Yes. No. Uh, Zulu Matab. Makul. Zulu. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I just have two or three more. Two more questions. Okay. Yes, yes quickly. <laughs> the first thing that I would like to ask before I, 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 I ask my, my next one or two questions, mm -hmm. let me see how many we can squeeze in. You've, you've worked at, at Google, or let yes. me say one of Google's companies, yes. uh, which is what? At, 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 at Escape. At Escape Media, Escape Media in yes. Canada, yeah, that's right? Cool. And you've done your good research. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is some of the lessons mm -hmm that you've learned around cryptography. Yes. And just right now, the emergence of this blockchain technology yeah. Yeah. and just these cryptocurrencies yes. that we are being uh, introduced to and this right. new world that we are being ushered into. Yes. I, I would like to, to hear your, your opinions around that and, and just that technology, the cryptography technology yes. that you studied then. And that's what, like a decade or two ago? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so I've actually even... Uh, created, I've engineered a, a cryptographic software. Uh, so this software, basically, uh, you can write text. And what it will do, it will encrypt the text. And then you can then uh, attach it to your email. You don't have to worry if somebody's going to read it. Even if the man in the middle comes across it and reads, they don't want to find anything there, you see. And then once it reaches the other side, and then that's, uh, the software will then encrypt it, decrypt it, mm -hmm. the other side. So I've actually written a software like that. And this software also has a, a forensics. So one of the things I do is computer forensics. Uh, so computer forensics is about authenticity. Authenticity of documents, authenticity of information and stuff like that. So for example, let's say a president is going to give a speech. So it's a written speech. And then, so if we're following the principles of forensics, so just before, maybe a day before the president speaks, uh, they need, they would pass the software, they've passed the speech through my software. And my software will detect any change, including invisible change. Because you can create an invisible change, maybe you add a space or something like that. But when you print the document, it will look like a normal document. And even the judge in court will not see that it was changed. But my software will, de will detect that change and says, there was a change here. So, uh, so that's the whole idea of uh, cryptography. So now, um, and I've actually done some work for one uh, insurance company. And you know, I've done this sort of thing. So, so basically, in this particular insurance company, somebody, uh, some people committed fraud. You know, the company lost millions of, of mm. friends. And, uh, and, and what they did is that these people, the robbers, 
uh, actually the employees actually of the company. So they even formatted the hard drive oh. so that when you do directory on hard drive, it says no files found, something like that. So somebody recommended me to this company and I got in touch with them. And then uh, they said, okay, give me the laptop. That was that, that doesn't have fun. They gave it to me. Then I came to my office. I started doing my, my magic there. <laughs> and then I rebuilt the documents that were formatted, that were deleted. Yes. And to an extent that the company was able to print those documents. There's everything, dates, signatures, whatever. And then the people were actually, of course, arrested and convicted on that. How humble are you, Marcos? Marcos. Because bringing Marcos. upon that, it takes, uh, you know, tapping yes. in deep somewhere. Marcos, Marcos. Coco, no coco, no coco. Ah, exactly. Yeah, so <laughs> somehow. So blockchain. So I think blockchain is an extremely uh, revolutionary idea, extremely great idea. <coughs> Sorry, because mm. the purpose behind blockchain is to get rid of the middleman. And who is the middleman? The bank. Central banking system. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. You know, I I have no love for banks. Uh, you know, of course, <laughs> we have to use the for bank. For obvious reasons. Yeah, so we are being raped because, you know, you, you have no choice in this sexual thing, you know, the bank wants it. And you must, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you, yeah, must it's a, you must give. Exactly, yeah, you must give. Yeah, you know. Your mind is not there, but yeah, uh, you know, no more pay mm. But you must. So, banks are rapists, really. I see a bank as a rapist thing. Anyways, so, um, and actually, one of the blockchain is Ether. Ether and is. that was invented by Canadian. Ethereum. Yeah, Ethereum. A Canadian. A Canadian is of Russian, of Russian origin. Vitalik Buterin. Exactly. Yeah. Young From man. Russia. Yes. yes. Young man. Yes, yes. And I give power to you. You see. Now, now talk about Russians. You see, Russians, we can take a page from that, from the Russians. Russians have got a very strong work ethic. And they're very serious about independent education. The education that is not manipulated by imperialism, you see. And they don't learn in English, they learn in mother tongue. Not only Russians, French do that, Spanish do that, and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, just to show the power of what I'm talking about. So uh, the first nuclear bomb, as you know, was invented by the Americans. Thanks to Albert Einstein, you know, Oppenheimer and stuff like that. And of course, the uh, you know the help also from uh, Germany. The German, yeah, yes. you know. Yes. But um, so Russia did not have a nuclear bomb, and America was throwing its weight around. And Russia felt that you know, if we don't respond to this, we are going to become a vassal state. So uh, what Russian did, they began to work on the, the, being all their best scientists. You know, they've got universities that specialize in physics, specialize in technology, mathematics, yeah. computer science. So, and then of course, in the case, what they also did, you know, knowledge is, information is important. So they use the KGB. There was a project called Manhattan Project which is the one that was de that developed the nuclear bomb for the U.S. No, they sent guys there. And the KGB brought the information. Mm. That, okay, this is what they're doing and this and that and stuff like that. In a matter of few years, America heard that Russia has exploded a nuclear bomb. They didn't believe it. But before that... Russia, uh, America used to what I call super fortress. That's that's the plane that I think bombed uh, you know Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> America, that nuclear bomber used to move from Japan, and they would move. Japan is close to Russia, and they would come right on the border of of Russia, just to just to intimidate, intimidate. them, you know. And so Russians used to be really have this anxiety. 
You could hear they're going to drop one. That they're going to drop one. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Hey. Yes. Hey. So the bamins. Hey. 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 They were no longer the only ones. These guys could respond. Mm, nuclear capacity. Yeah, nuclear capacity. Just like right now, the whole world is here. We don't know. Yes. No, 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 you're right. I'm for it. I'm for it. So, today as we speak, Russia is the largest nuclear superpower, more than America. How about that? Mm. Right now as we speak. And that is a teaching to us, the Melanie, that you can come from behind and take a top center stage center so stage mm. exactly yeah. take center stage you can do that mm. um today as we speak uh, i remember a few years ago uh, they were talking about a hypersonic missile and the american scientists engineers policy makers estimated that it would take 10 years to develop a hypersonic missile ah russians baba pegaji As we speak right now, Russians have a hypersonic missile. Uh, and they actually used one to destroy a NATO military center in Ukraine. Ukraine. Mm. Yes. So they were not sending uh, that missile uh, just to kill Ukraine. They wanted to send a statement to America and NATO that we can destroy you. And you don't have a protection for that. because the 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 hypersonic missile it means that that particular one from Russia is actually 10 times the speed of light mm. now what is the speed of light so I'm forward to get your calculator there and I'll give you the numbers <laughs> yes sir yes i'm ready okay so 1000 235 1235 yeah roughly yes sir oh i actually know let's actually backtrack delete that okay so 343 343 times uh, 60 times 60 times another 60 times another 60 what number do you get 1,234,800 uh no we have made a mistake can it can be i uh, delete that okay So 343 Okay let me let me do this 343 yeah. times 60 answer yeah. yeah and then that's 20580 times I can't no no it's, it's still not doing well It's still not doing well okay Okay no that's fine yes. no that's fine go ahead yeah no that's fine I think that I think that that should be okay Okay that's 343 343 times times 60 times 60 and then times, times another 60, 60. Yeah. okay times another 60 you get some it goes back to yeah no it's fine 1.2 million and then divide by 1000 or divided by 1000 what do you get i get 1234.8 that is the speed. speed of light of speed of, and the speed of sound of sound that's a speed of sound per uh, per yeah per hour or something like that yeah per hour so now, one point now let's go back you, you don't delete that one? number yes. yeah, I, haven't, i haven't deleted okay you got what one point so it was close to what no, i said 1.1234.8 right. so yeah. so actually I, that's the number i gave you as you remember i said 1234 <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. exactly there it is and that's But, where you break the sound barrier yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. i know no no this, this is this is not the sound barrier oh, this is just the speed of sound now to break the sound barrier you have to multiply that uh, so multiply by 10 multiply by 10 makes yeah. that hypersonic missile from russia yes. speed yeah, exactly <sighs> how much is that that's 12348 exactly hmm. that's the speed of the missile 12000 right so mm. so that in, that's so powerful that actually uh, the missile Ooh. does not even need a, a, an explosive just the body itself is a, at that speed it's well, enough to well, make heaven oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it mm-hmm. will damage mm. it doesn't even need an explosive actually <laughs> that's me it's mm. like a wrecking ball on the loose without Neither. having an explosive exactly, charge exactly, you know yeah. what i mean mm. so <laughs> so speed. russians have that americans don't have that and I, i'm also inspired by that that you see conceptualization of knowledge determines the ability to solve a problem 
The reason Americans don't have that yet is because they don't have the Russian conceptualization of how they conceptualize. So that's why it is toxic for us, it is poisonous for us to go and learn in America, Europe, and stuff like that. We need to build our own schools and, 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 and access the conceptual, concept, conceptualization of knowledge from the African Indians, like this beautiful African woman. Quick one, last two, Paul. Yeah. I know well, I would love for us to learn again on yeah. another episode. Marcos, yes. This can't be the last one. And I was just, <laughs> I was just gonna just reiterate what uh, Marcos is saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina, what have we got? Because yes. Itenel is now, yeah, you know, privatizing all on the SOEs. Knees. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it is giving all these SOEs to all these capitalists. It, it's on, yeah, its, it's on its knees, yes. Itenel. And which was flourishing, the Roy Falk yes. know, helicopter was manufactured I, 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 here. I, I like Roy Falk, what yes. you just said. You know, what you're saying is yes. very powerful, Fatou. It's very powerful. And mm. we give thanks to that. To us, of course. Uh, because when we took over this country, uh, we could have built on what was there. You know, Roy Falk is interesting because Roy Falk actually is faster than the Apache. Apache is the best American. Helicopter. helicopter. Yeah. I think it, it flies at around, I don't know, maybe 200 and, I don't know, maybe 280 kilometers, something like that, mm. per hour. Mm. Roy Falk goes more than 300. Mm. You see that? And it's move, maneuverable. It's maneuverable, yes. It's, it's very flexible. Yes. Isn't it? In yes. fact, I remember when I was in Canada on CNN, when they have these commercials of helicopters, uh, Roy Falk, there were four helicopters that were shown to be the best on the planet. Mm. And one of the four was the Roy Falk. The Roy Falk. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Was the Roy Falk. You see, um, I, I, in my view, the greatest leader we have ever had is Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because Nelson Mandela, what makes him the greatest leader is where he comes from. So Mandela comes from an, an indigenous, traditional, Mtimbu cultural background. And he comes from a large family. You know, you know how many siblings he has? He's got 13 siblings. Mm -hmm. And then he's got four mothers. Because his mother, his father had married his team. I see. Yes, four, four women. So there were 17. But as you know, in our African families, we, we, we adopt it, don't we? <laughs> yeah, and we adopt from the clan. Yes, sir. Exactly, yeah. Mm. So you'll find that maybe there were more than 20, something like that. So, and it is my thesis that I've developed that great African leaders come from polygamous family backgrounds. Mm. Or at least large. Like in my case, I don't come from polygamous, I but I come from a large family. You know, you said 17. 17 siblings, yeah. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Yes. that would include cousins and yes, all that stuff. Yes. yes. So, I, there's a book I'm writing called How to Know. You remember I mentioned that How to Know If Yena is the Right One to advise young men and young women on how to choose correctly. Because uh, the reason our families are broken is because of wrong choices. You know, then they discover after marriage, then they divorce, stuff like that. So, but basically the thesis in that book says that if uh, you want to choose, you know, a, or let's say take a girl, for example, and then she wants to, like I always talk this with my daughter to say, how do you know if he's the right one? Mm -hmm. And then my daughter will say, hey, dad, how do I know? I said, well, you have to ask him one important question, only one. What question can you ask? And then she's not sure. And then I said, okay, ask him how many siblings he has. If he says he's the only boy, cancel the date and move on. <laughs> Finish oh, and Can't challenge it. Can't challenge it. Can't challenge it. Yes. 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 Yeah. And the reason is simple. Uh, he is very attached to his mother. So as a Makoti, you're going to be competing with his mother and you'll never win. Your, his mother is better than you. Hmm. Will always be. Mm. Exactly. Will always be. But if they are sort of 13 or 12, ah, then, then somehow, then, yeah. You can have an individual there who yes. can be independent. Exactly. Who, who, who's who will excellent. Take care of you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like my dad. Mm. 13 siblings. 
And, mm. and check this out. Jealousy does not thrive in a large family. Did you know that? Yeah. Jealousy does not thrive in, in a, a large, large family. family. No, mm. it thrives in small families. Mm. You see, white people are very jealous and they have small families. See that? What they call nuclear family. Protecting the Prote wealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protecting the Jealousy legacy, thrives in such and Things of such nature. Exactly. Yes. There's a lot of jealousy in townships because it's in urban centers. That's why even when they build their houses in townships, the show is a small. They wanted to, for, they want, they were creating a mechanism. Division. Uh -huh, unfortunately. Mm. Division and small, because they know that small family, you're going to develop jealousy there. Divide and conquer. And Divide there's and jealousy, conquer. there's conflict. There's conflict. Naturally. Naturally. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. naturally. Mm. Check, check this out. If you are in an elevator, a lift, have you noticed how you feel? You feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Hmm, it's, a, it's a small and close exactly. space. Exactly. As soon as Lomyang Ufa there. Yebo. Yebo. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, so that's why Mandela is the greatest one because mm. he came from that background. And you can compare him with other leaders. He was succeeded by Tabumbek, right? Yes. The great Tabumbek, whom I respect greatly. Mm. But Tabumbek comes from a very small family. You know, I think he's the first one is Linda Mbeki, the sister. And then he's the second born, mm. Tabo Mbeki, followed by Mwele Mbeki, the third one. There well. is a fourth one, I don't know what, I what happened to him. Yet. And Mbeki is accused of being aloof. Something that you find in small families. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you see that? But but it's a, it's a great, he was a great leader. We respect mm. him for that. Mm. So, um, so that's why um, I'm very passionate about us solving the problem of the father absence. We must. Because that's what initially breaks the African exactly, family, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yes, The absence yes, of the father. The absence of the father. Yes. It reduces that size, family size. Mm. And it also, uh, you know, uh, uh, grows uh, toxic uh, things in there. In fact, uh, uh, I wrote an, an article in Sosotho called Dietzel or Zetar. Ameva Matad. Zetar. Yes. Ameva Matad. Yes. And I was addressing the question of these divisions, these internecine conflicts, these separatist tendencies. You see even our politicians, Bashapanagari face. Mm. Yeah, there is a reason why Bashapanagari face. Basha, we, Basha, you were giddy Zetar. Zetar. Basha, drink Ameva Amatad. Eva Lokala Mona. Mona, Lifufa. Eva Lisbili, Mohon, Nessuzul, Umkulunga. You see, in Jamaica, I will call him Umkulunga. Yes. That one is a, a lot of people confuse Mona and, and Mohon, but actually they're different because Mohon is based on Lifufa, envy. And then Mohon is based on fear. In Jamaica, Sabu Mkulunga, Yoiga, Yabon, Econi to Isaba. So in the case of the melanin, if umamfuki, umamfuki, oh haya, maybe pamisal botanyana, what lo haya, I don't know, either kim kukunyana or or spazanyana, what lo riksa dijo, something like that. Ma muma kala na bata fita, bare, haba fita be bare, haba fita maybe aluna kufiti, bare. Hey, umamfuki ndiena. Emungar, uweza. That statement is most tragic. Story of our lives. Oh, mm, that one. People, unfortunately. Season bonus or Pelela. Yeah, yeah, one of that one. Because they, they are really saying they have no interest in supporting Mamfuke. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it went there and it was a big cool woman up. In 20 years, it's a big one that you move to the home. Una na or gema. Una na And then, and it went there again, some be a man la pele, but my la fele, le botele, le pame, me belly fell, and was a honor, mumfuk and lose a pet. But there is a little more or la fell la car. In 20 years, it's a big one that you move to the home. Yeah, like a man. 
Exactly. So that is mkulungwane. Mm. So then the uh, sasu if I list that linyazo ugoyisa. You know the melanin. How come na liye na the first time? Utla usheva mama utu anyulu welwe liye na. You know why? What he's scanning for? He's scanning for a reason to despise you. Hmm? With something. With something. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Yes. With something. something. Yes. It could be your shoes. It could be your It shoes. could be your belt as exactly. they go up your waistline. Yeah. Ah. It could be your hair. Yeah. Even. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I you know I've read about the seven deadly sins, mm-hmm. and I think these are important in the in the context of you know our mm-hmm. Africanness. Yeah, my course. You know, I would also just dub them mm-hmm. the three deadly sins. Our visa, ameva, amata. Yes, yes. And it's being specific by saying yeah, for the melanin. For, for the, the melanin, melanin. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those are the three things we yes. need to eliminate, yes. destroy. Yes. From yes. our being. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Destroy and then build. Yes. Mm. Uh, Destroy and, and build. Unplug these thoughts. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yes. learn and then relearn. And learn, yeah, and mm. relearn. Exactly. For tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nagorishile, just the last. Yes, my course. <laughs> my, my last one would be asking you of books that you would recommend apart from your books. Okay. Or maybe they can be from your books. Yeah, absolutely, so, and I must uh, yes, so that uh, they can support us. <laughs> yes. for, for the youngsters that are saying, yes, wow. What an episode. I would like to start somewhere. What is the first book I must go to right now? What is that first book? What is that second book? What yes. is that third book? Let's start with three. Let's not overload okay. them. Yeah, that would be course. my last question. But the question that I wanted to ask, it stems from um, some of the things that you were touching a few minutes ago. I wanted to know about the ancient Tesla technology. Okay. Because there's a lot of rumors that actually there's a lot of technology that is being hidden yeah. from the general public of the world, the yes. whole world, us, yes. the masses, right? Yes. Yes. There's just that rumor good. There's actually advanced technologies yes. that are being hidden from us that we actually have yeah. currently, yeah. but they kind of feel that um, they are too far ahead of us to get them right now. And apparently they've been releasing them gang, 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 over the decades. Yeah. What I wanted to know, my question is the relationship between the ancient, what they would call the Tesla technology mm-hmm. and our ancestors, the melanated people's yeah, yeah, yeah. technology in relation to your the likes of your Inzalo Yelanga, yeah, yeah. Um, the pyramids of Giza, right. the pyramids in Sudan, in Texas, yeah. and that cosmic technology that our, an, our ancient forefathers yeah. and foremothers yes. had. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we start with the books, eh? Uh, oh yeah, let's start with that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Sir. So the first book I would recommend is gonna be The Sacred Knowledge of the Desert. The sacred knowledge. Yeah. This is the one, yeah. This is the one, yes. Um and the reason being that uh, is is um, is tackling the question of African philosophy. And in this one is about the African philosophy of transcendence. Uh, because what has happened over time is that as Africans we have become uh, defined by our harsh conditions. You know, you can hear even when speak, people speak. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's amazing when people have a normal conversation, they'll talk about these pr- problems, but they'll never talk about solutions. And and I've actually tried sometimes, as I'm listening to them talk, I would then inject, make a segue and say, okay, how do we solve this problem? And you know what happens usually? They run out of words. It's like they don't know how to talk anymore. Mm. And when I retreat, they go back to that complaining thing, you know, those bad things. So they have become defined by the conditions. And so this book will help them to be undefined by the adverse conditions. That is the sacred knowledge of the desert. Yes. By Zulu Matabu. Yes. The African, African philosophical transcendence. Makos. Makos. Yes, sir. That and the second be, book? That will be the first. So the second book is this one called Indigenous 
knowledge, knowledge systems, systems in, in the, the 21st, 21st century. century. Yes. The one we're launching in December. The one I'm launching in December. Oh, we'd appreciate an invite. <laughs> um, of course, uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll get your contacts and we'll put you on here. Sure. Recognizing and harnessing their worth. Yes. Indigenous knowledge systems. Exactly. Yeah. Course, yeah. So I wrote a chapter there called Water-Based Plants. So I'm describing the, the medicine plants. Africans uh, used to uh, be great seafarers right here in the land of Azania. Mm. Yes. The, what we call Indian Ocean today, that was called before um, Azanian Sea or the, land, or the Sea of Azania. And the word Azania is interesting. Uh, if you break it in two parts, there's Azar and there's Nia. Azar is about the coming. Like Sieza, Baeza, oh. you see, yeah, Asa, it's about the coming. And then Nia is about a desirable purpose. Like if a, a, a Zul person says, Nia itanda na. Yeah, but yeah, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what they are really saying is, is what we are offering you in accordance with your desirable purpose. Oh. See that? Very philosophical. Mm. Azanian pals. Azanian pals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His first musical um, yeah. uh, um, offering. Project. Oh, my God. Yes. My God. We called it Azanian pals. That's, yeah, yes. it's powerful. Eh? Because now we wanted to, to, to align and yes. connect yes. with what you are explaining. Exactly. Yes. And I made a, a conscious decision that I will not use the word South Africa. I will use the word Azania. Hmm. Apparently, uh, we always associate Azania in South Africa with PAC, right? Mm. But actually, it's not exactly like that. Because I think PAC, uh, Ghana became independent, what, 1958, is it? Yes, 1958. 1958, okay. Kwame Nkrumah. So. Yes. Yeah, 1958. Yes. Sure. And then, uh, Robert Sobuke, Professor Robert Sobuke broke away from the NC in 1959. You mm. see? Oh, it was 57, actually. Oh, 57. Oh, thank Ghanaian you. Ghanaian independence. Okay, yeah. so Ghanaian independence is 1957. <clears throat> oh, yes, that's right. Six March. Mm, yes, and then 1958 was the conference that was held by Kwame Nkrumah called All Africa, African People's Conference. Mm. It is in that conference that he proposed Azania as the name of South Africa. Oh. So Gumru is the first one who actually came with that idea. How about that? But the All African People's Conference was partly a corollary yeah. and partly a different perspective to the modern Africa states Macaulay. represented by the Conference of Heads yeah. of Independent Africa states. And that was 1958. Mm. Mm. And then, uh, but, but you know, for it, I have to uh, pay tribute to you. Yes. You're a great reader. So I like what you do because basically the young people now will have an uptake of a realist don't age. Yes, sir. Because some of our people, you know, they mean well, I'm getting photo oh, But uh, they kind of engage in speculative pursuit of knowledge. Mm. You know, mm. they will say things that are not attested for. So myself, I have made a decision that uh, the knowledge that we produce at Madiseba University Research Institute has to be based on reality. So, and what we use, we use, we rely on uncontested facts. You see, uncontested facts. So that, and, and why? Because my target is the black child. And by the black child, we mean the future generations. So when the black child says, the Africans invented a calculator before the Europeans, then- No one can the dispute one, that. Exactly, mm -hmm. the one who's opposing mm -hmm. will do Google and say, yes, there it is, Zulma Tabo wrote about it in that book. Mm. So the black child, we don't want to put a burden of proof on the black child. We, knowledge producers, must carry that burden. We need to. This is Tigo and Zagalan. Makos, Makos. African Makos. spirits in the jungle. Yes. Zulumata. 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 Togoza Makos. That was done in, um, in exile mm. in Canada. Yes. I had a, a, a studio, a recording studio there. So I play an instrument called a synthesizer, mm. which was a very popular instrument when I was growing up. Yes. I think uh, Soul Brothers still play that. Eh? You can hear that that amazing, Black that Moses. exotic. Black Moses. Black Moses. Ooh. Exactly, yes. Oh, and you say, but 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 you say, but
Mm. So I then composed musical instruments on this synthesizer, and then I didn't began to create a mu musical. Is is an electronica uh, genre? This yes, of course. So I created those sounds for purposes of meditation. Mm. Uh, M that was the purpose of this. So it's meditative, uh, meditative sort of, uh, sound. Yes, music, yeah. yes. But I'm the seeing, African way. The African oh, way. Oh, And I'm seeing titles here like uh, Mantatisi. Mantatisi. Manuku. Yes. Uh, Manuku, yes. Uh, Ma Manzupa. Manzupa. Who's a great figure within Lesotho. Oh, yeah? of course. As uh, Umama. Uh, Basutu, yes. Umama yes. Beram Kool. Yeah, Wayam Kool. Yeah, Kool. Yeah, Kool. yeah, she died here in the free state. Her grave yes. is in the free state. Yeah. Manzupa. Yeah, Manzupa, that's right. Yeah. And then Limu Firifirmu. Yes. Yeah. So very very gay. Go to see Zoom Zoom. Zoom San and San and see see what are they? But still one alone. Eh. Yeah. Eh. To do the. You love that. So uh, was African so, spirits in the jungle. Yes. Um, of course, uh, you can uh, order the CD mm. www.zulumatabo.com. That's yes. where you can get a hold of, uh, you know, the Marcos, CD. Yeah. Meditative music. Uh, yeah. He says, yeah. um, cool. Towards. And we have a few here, I think, uh, in the office. Yeah. Towards. Anyways, uh, so, 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 uncontested facts is key for us. Yes. That black child must, must just be able, go to, it must be like a car, you know, you just have to put the ignition, drive. He doesn't have to worry about the engine. Yes, sir. That's yes. why. That's why actually myself and Paul are doing this. Okay. They don't have to worry too much. Um, they must just press play and watch. Ah, my, ah beautiful. And then we are sending ah, them to research to go things. do their ah, homework. Ah, yes. we give thanks for that's that. it. Yes. We need more of you like that. More of you for tomorrow. That's what we need. Yes. yes yeah. So that the black child, you know, can vibrate as Yena was intended to vibrate. Yes, sir. In accordance with the vibration of the African Indians. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> the Tesla technology. <laughs> no, you still want was it stolen? Nah, yeah. You want to know was that? it even yeah. bought? It? Was it even his? <laughs> <laughs> Just that last one. Sir. Yes. And then I would be looking forward yeah. to our next sure, session. Sure. Yes. We close it so, out. by the way, Tesla is that the guy who came from Yugoslavia? Uh, I don't know his history where he came from, but okay. I do know the that one. The one who created. I get. I get. There were two types of electrical inventions. Yes. There was uh, Thomas Edison. Yes. And there was yes. Tesla. Yes. yes. Mm. And, Edison, and apparently like, Edison uh, yeah. took Tesla's knowledge okay. and claimed it as his. Yes. Apparently. I don't apparently, know okay. that is also, yes. But, but what I know is that uh, he killed Tesla. That's because, what they say. Because, you know, think about this in, in this today, it would be, let's say you've got, um, you've got Yahoo and then Google comes and kills Yahoo. And kills Yahoo. You see there. So it's the same thing. Uh, the, the forerunner was Tesla. Uh, his current was based on what's called DC, direct current. And then, um, so you see, that's conceptualization again. And then Thomas Edison came with AC, a, a, a different conceptualization, alternating current. And then, but, but you know, talking about taking, Thomas, you know, the textbook, the, the electrical engineering textbook that was used by Thomas Edison Company. All engineers use this textbook. You know who wrote that textbook? It's a black man called uh, Latima Lewis. Sila. Oh, this is yes. what I was trying Latima to Latima Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Latina? No, actually, Fatima. I think Fatima Lewis. Fatima Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, let's check that. Fatima, Fatima Lewis. Yeah. Lewis. Okay, Lewis. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Louise or Lewis? Lewis, I think. Okay, Lewis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See if you find something there. Okay, this is the school of salvation. Let's see. Ah, no, put put uh, put. I don't know. Is it Latima maybe or try Latima? <laughs> uh, 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 let me say. Um, yeah. Okay, let me do this. Uh, Actually, what you can do, you can add light bulb. Oh, light bulb. Next yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I right. just added Thomas Edison on the side, but yeah, let me yeah, just, let no, me just add fine. light bulb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes in Clambe, yeah. he has Google. He, he's he's a, sometimes he, about food. Exactly, he, about food. He's he a, he, about food. He's a, sometimes, he, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of censorship here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of censorship <laughs> indeed. Yeah, yeah. Fatima Chandelier. Fatima. Fatima. Oh, Fatima Chandelier. Gray six bulb lights. Okay. The six light Fatima so, chandelier with its rust. Okay, they're even showing the different. Okay, sorry. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Uh, but uh, if you say Fatima Lewis, it should uh, give you a biography of this particular person. So he's a black man who wrote the textbook that was used by Thomas Edison. That's mm -hmm. one point. The second point, 
he also invented the incandescent light bulb. This black man. Yes. Yeah. So, and that was very powerful stuff. Thrilling. I worked for a company called Bell Northern Research uh, in Canada. In Canada, yes. Yeah. So uh, that company is linked to the, the to to his work because his uh, stuff in the in the museum of Bell Northern Research. And Thomas Edison is regularly identified as the inventor. Yes. Though that claim is itself often challenged. Yes, in general. Mm. Word, yes. <coughs> exactly. Very and that's a black man. Yeah? Mm. Yes. Oh, he was a black man. And he came to Canada to install this electrical system. So the electrical system in Canada was installed by him. I think even in New York was installed by him in the 1800s. Mm. Yes. So, uh, so, 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 so now, now on your response to your question, of course, yes, there is a lot of uh, technology uh, that was invented by the African descendants. And, and some of the technology of the ancients, uh, we still looking for it. We haven't, we haven't found it, for example. I mean, if you look at uh, Ra Ra Ramses, Ra Ramses, the pharaoh. Yes. Uh, if you look at his statue, it's flawless, especially if you if you put a line of symmetry in the middle of the body, and you look on the left side and the right side. I mean, the symmetry is flawless. Perfect. And that would have would require a machine. Mm. You know, yeah, human hand cannot be that flawless. Mm. It would require a machine. Yeah. But they haven't found those machines. But it would require a machine. There's even where they make holes on through the rocks. The rock, the, the hole there is flawless, like a, like a drill machine, a giant drill machine. You see that? So one of our challenges is to investigate these ancient technologies. And of course, I, I talked about the bone. Uh, that bone fascinates me because, you know, I look at that, I see the writing system. Did you know that English people don't have a writing system? I didn't know so. They don't. You must Google my article called uh, Did the Maths Ever So To Writing System? I, I, I go into details about mm. that. Did the Maths Ever So To, D I T E M A, Did the Maths Ever So To Writing System? And then I wrote that article, so uh, it goes into de details about that. So basically, the English people do not have a writing system. Yeah, here it is. The Timazawa Sutra writing system Zuluma Tabo on the internet 2.0 oh, to strive towards a pure form of knowledge mm -hmm. so that we don't have to believe the unbelievable and accept the unacceptable. Exactly. The Basutu people in the Eastern Free State have had a greatest impact mm -hmm. on my philosophy. This is obviously yeah. you know, just a little. Mm -hmm. On my philosophical thinking and worldview, mm -hmm. these venerated people possess an amazing and unique knowledge of detail glyphs, mm. which was used as a writing system long before the advent of Euro Christian yeah. colonization. Exactly. Mm. Of course. Exactly. So, so the English people don't have a writing system. You know why? Their ancestors did not invent one. So when they came here and they say, Yo, you didn't, your ancestors did not know how to read and write. We taught you how to read and write. They are referring to the alphabets. This alphabet we are using currently, this is a Latin script. This was created by the Romans. But where did the Romans get it from? They came from Kemet. Now, if you look at the hieroglyphic system, the way it works, it has got two systems, actually. It has got alphabetic and uh, what you call logo logographic. System. So I just laughed in my mind. Mkulun that doesn't even like that word, hieroglyphics. Apparently, that's okay. the original word. It's oh, okay. Yeah, so it was a Medunature. Medunature. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Medunature. Yes, yes, yes. Medunature. Yes, yes, yes. But all within nature. Yeah, all within nature. So, so it's interesting that, so, it has an alphabetic system, but that alphabetic system does not have vowels. It's only consonants. So that's why you'll have different spellings. Like, for example, uh, uh, Atum is the god, the first god of Kemet. And the Greeks, they say Atom. Oh, it? Atom. Yes, it comes from that. It comes from that, yeah. It comes from that. So basically then... Um, so, so we need to investigate and find these technological instruments. Um, some of them are, will be on the rocks. Uh, for example, you remember we're talking about the architect architectural design? 
So in Mpumalanga, there are rocks there where the ancients actually engraved how they designed houses. How about that? Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, in Sesotho, the word Lishume, in Zulu, Shume, refers to the, to the circumference of the settlement. Mm. Yeah, because uh, what they used to do when they came to a new piece of land, then they would have these shrubs and then create a, a perimeter there. Some, so sort that, of, some sort of a fence. Yeah, has some sort of a fence. Yeah. The village a wall, inside. yeah. Mm. So that when the lions come, they cannot cross because using what they call um, mimosa trees, something like that. Yes. I'm, I'm still not enough. I think another day. <laughs> another day. Wow, I'm blown away. I'm getting goosebumps. Another day. That's <laughs> We give thanks for the opportunity to sit and um, to exchange this very important uh, knowledge that will take us further, I think, uh, you know, as Africans, but more important for the upcoming generations to be able to embrace this uh, knowledge. Uh, the contact guys is www.zulumatabo with an H tabo with an H yes, yes. Yeah. dot com yes that's zulumatabo.com thank you sir nyabonga put Paul nyabonga put always I'm very humble thank you House of Sankofa Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs>